Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, from our first break. So our next talk today is from Peter from Ampere and also was an assist from Ed Mast. Here's to talk about running FreeBSD on the Ampere EMAG systems. And I believe we even might see a live demo. So I'm going to turn it over to Peter and to Ed. Hey, everybody. I'm going to get my slides. Sharing. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Hey everybody, I'm Peter Pouliot from Ampere Computing and I work in uh, developer advocacy. And I'm uh, here with uh, Ed Mast today to talk about running FreeBSD on the Ampere Ultras, not the Emacs. So what we're gonna talk about is a little bit about the FreeBSD AR64 timeline. A uh, little bit of information to make you familiar with the Ampere Ultra. We're going to talk about the Ampere Ultra uh, A1 instances that are found and freely available in uh, Oracle's cloud infrastructure. And then we're going to use those free resources to, to do a demo of uh, FreeBSD running on the Ampere Ultra. And then I'll give this slide to Ed to kick it off. Yeah, so this is a just a timeline of FreeBSD's involvement with uh, AR64 um, or ARM64 as as we call it uh, for the um, uh, for the the FreeBSD architecture name. Um, so the uh, it, it's the whole project began roughly a decade ago um, with Andy Turner sort of in the FreeBSD community starting to poke around at the the new and upcoming 64-bit ARM architecture. Um, and the foundation recognized that this was a pretty uh, important uh, architecture on the horizon. Um, so a couple of years later, we started sponsoring the effort, uh, working with Andy Turner directly and Semihalf um, with some funding provided by uh, ARM and from Cavium at the time, um, and basically just kind of coordinated all of the effort on the FreeBSD port to AR64. Um, and then a couple of years after that, FreeBSD 11.0 was the first release that we had with AR64 support included uh, out of the box in the release. There were still a few rough edges, but um, but it was uh, it was available. We had release uh, images, and um, it it was a, a working um, release. There were a few additional toolchain things um, that we we sorted out after that, um, and a few outstanding uh, issues to resolve. Um, leading up to just last year, um, the core team agreeing to promote AR64 to be uh, a tier one architecture in FreeBSD. So we now have 64-bit um, x86 and ARM as the, um, the tier one architectures in FreeBSD uh, at this point, uh, moving forward and uh, continuing to work on support for new security uh, features and, and other uh, enhancements in later um, uh, ISAs. And so what does tier one mean in the, the FreeBSD context? Basically, the tier one status is uh, a number of commitments that the project makes to users of that architecture. Um, it's also a um, sort of an implicit statement about the, the quality and stability of the architecture, but specifically it means things like we provide um, install media and pre-built cloud images um, with our release engineering process it means that binary packages are available for the architecture in our package collection. Um, we provide security updates, both in security advisories and security updates in source and binary update form. Um, kernel and user interfaces are stable. Uh, so, you know, you can use a binary that was compiled for an older version of a tier one architecture on the latest release. Um, and it's included in our continuous integration and, and testing environments. And so all of these things are true for FreeBSD uh, ARM64 today. And uh, I wanted to mention this slide here just as a um, sort of uh, uh, to demonstrate the, or to highlight the, the importance of AR64 
in FreeBSD's um, uh, future and and why it's why why do we need to put this effort in in the first place? Um, so this is based on some data from ARM, um, and this is specifically for the desktop and lap, laptop market, um, which is is perhaps not where we've typically had um, our focus in the past. Uh, but I think it it really does highlight the importance of of AR64 in the overall ecosystem. Um, you know, we're we're expecting uh, that uh, that ARM64 machines will comprise a, a, a very good, uh, very sizable fraction of even the desktop uh, laptop market in the next couple of years. And we've certainly seen that so far with the um, uh, with Apple's uh, um, uh, end user facing machines. So a little bit about Ampere. So Ampere is a you know passionate, experienced team, uh, you know com committed to building the next generation of uh, server processors uh, based on the ARM64 uh, architecture, and and we're targeting you know today uh, specifically uh, you know cloud and edge use cases, but uh, you know we are we are essentially building a uh, general purpose AR64 processor for your data center. Uh, our company's headquartered in uh, Santa Clara. However, we have a worldwide uh, presence uh, with offices in uh, India, China, uh, Vietnam, as well as uh, multiple cities within the United States. And, uh, you know, Ampere is really uh, focused on disrupting the industry uh, by, uh, you know, providing the highest core count uh, and core density uh, you know, in your data center, as well as the highest, uh, you know, performance per watt and the lowest uh, power uh, per core, uh, you know, in our, in our products. And, uh, you know, we've been working with, uh, you know, uh, the FreeBSD Foundation for a uh, little over, well, almost a couple of years now at, uh, from my time here at Ampere, um, both with, uh, you know, donation of uh, hardware resources, as well as, uh, you know, ongoing, uh, efforts to try to, uh, you know, ensure that FreeBSD is a first-class citizen on Ampere platforms. And then a, a little bit about the Ampere Ultra. So, you know, the the, the core tenants of, uh, you know, what we designed into the chip are, you know, uh, some thing in things that we talk about uh, specifically are, you know, the predictable performance. Essentially, the Ampere Ultra uses a single thread per core. Um, so because of that, we, we, it causes, uh, you know, predictability, uh, because we have such a large amount of cores, uh, you know, it gives us and a single thread per core, uh, we're not as susceptible to some of the problems that, uh, threaded, uh, multi-threaded cores have, uh, and, uh, you know, because of the high core count, it gives us, uh, you know, unprecedented scalability, um, and, you know, I, I, as such. Uh, you know, comparatively to our competition, uh, you know, we do have the best price uh, per, per, per performance um, than, uh, than others. And, uh, you know, a lot of that can actually be seen uh, and realized uh, in one of our customers uh, that's, that's utilizing it in their cloud infrastructure, uh, today specifically uh, Oracle, uh, who currently charges about a cent uh, per core hour for an Ampere Ultra uh, processor core. So, uh, you know, as we as we were saying, the Ampere Ultra delivers the best price uh, for, per perform per uh, price and performance in the industry. Uh, the Ampere Ultra Max has uh, uh, basically 128 cores. The Ultra is an 80 core. Both come in a in a in a 2P uh, configuration in our Mount Jade platform. Uh, Mount Jade is the Mount Jade platform is an OCP certified and OCP accepted uh, platform. Uh, all the cores in the Ultra platform are Neoverse N1, and they run at uh, three gigahertz. Um, there's a large and optimal uh, cache hierarchy, uh, you know, large network I/O and bandwidth, and uh, you know, it's great for uh, ML inference uh, acceleration. And, and our goal is to be the leader in the power, uh, you know, uh, basically power per core. Um, in terms of leading the uh, industry and the green uh, data center movement. So and then, uh, you know, we, we try to maximize uh, the Ampere Ultra for, for both scale and security. 
So, you know, as, as we said, we utilize a single thread per core. So this, you know, helps uh, to provide a little more isolation and, and prevent uh, noisy neighbor situations uh, because of the fact that it's a single thread per core uh, loader. It, we, we have a lower, uh, you know, lower vulnerability uh, to side channel attacks. And also because of this is consistent and predictable performance um, with a high thread count as well. This is what an Ampere Mount Jade platform uh, looks like. Um, and as I said, it's the uh, it's a 2U, 2B configuration with up to uh, 256 cores using our Ultramax uh, processor. And it's the first ARG64 uh, server contributed to the Open Compute project. And obviously, you know, as I said earlier, we're, we're shooting to be a, a you know, a, a cloud native processor, but that's, you know, um, capable of, uh, you know, satisfying, um, you know, computation for uh, general purpose workloads. So, um, you know, we feel that it works great across some of these uh, type of uh, standard industry, um, industry workloads that you would find in a cloud provider. And then what we're going to talk about today is uh, basically some of the free resources that are available to developers uh, available uh, on Oracle's cloud, uh, specifically uh, the uh, FreeBSD shape called the Ampere A1 uh, gives you access to up to uh, four uh, cores uh, and up to 24 gigs of memory in an always free uh, situation. So you don't have to uh, pay for anything and you can get basically get access to those ARM cores for your own development, uh, you know, activities. And because it's in, you know, a, a cloud native uh, format, you can utilize, you know, your typical uh, data center uh, in DevOps tooling to interact with that. So, and as we we're saying that there's also uh, with that free tier, you get, you know, additional credits, uh, and then there's also uh, ARM accelerator program uh, for open source projects that uh, you know want to have uh, more more compute time uh, on the on the cloud, and and that can be uh, applied to uh, through Oracle's uh, site. Now the uh, there's a Oracle spent a lot of time building a, a strong ecosystem uh, to help developers around the A1. So they do have, you know, some Linux instances and uh, and things like that that are already curated with a series of tooling and uh, software stacks to help, you know, provide quicker uh, sort of uh, time to <laughs> doing things on the Ampere A1. So this is just some information about uh, about that. And then now to talk about what Ed and I have been working on uh, in terms of uh, FreeBSD and the Ampere Ultras. So uh, we basically took some, uh, 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 some Terraform code that I originally uh, put together uh, to work with OCI. And uh, it utilizes, as I mentioned before, the Oracle Cloud infrastructure is always free tier uh, to, to uh, get access to those virtual machine resources. Uh, the Terraform code itself does some uh, basic scaffolding for laying out the network infrastructure uh, necessary to actually launch uh, the instance. It will also create dynamic uh, SSH keys that can be used to log into the instance once it's done launching. And then it will uh, we'll also render some metadata, some cloud init metadata uh, to push into the instance uh, at instantiation uh, to help trigger you know, some of the uh, some automation to happen. And obviously, you know, we're going to launch a curated image that uh, the, the FreeBSD Foundation worked to build on OCI, and uh, we're going to use that uh, and expose SSH so we can we can log into it uh, from the outside world. And on that note, I guess, Ed, do you want me to stop sharing and you can uh, take over? Yeah, sure. All right. So I'll share this screen first. Um, this is the Oracle uh, web interface for the um, for Oracle Cloud. Um, and uh, you can see here I have 
um, a pair of instances here that are uh, that had been running. They've been been terminated. I have nothing nothing running right now, um, and I just wanted to highlight this note um, that the the web interface uh, uh, indicates here. Uh, as Peter said. Um, you get uh, a number of free uh, CPU hours and um, uh, memory um, and it tells you that it's enough to, to, to run the, the free resources Peter mentioned. So, uh, you know, you can sign up and repeat this Terraform demo um, and reserve those instances and start using them. So I'll switch, um, switch here to my... Uh, Terraform demo window. So this, I've forked uh, the repository from the Ampere uh, GitHub organization, which is the, the Terraform uh, example that spins up a number of Ubuntu instances. Uh, and I was able to, um, able to spin up FreeBSD instances just by changing the Oracle uh, cloud, uh, the Oracle image ID um, to a FreeBSD image instead of the Ubuntu image. And we, We'll work on getting this integrated into the FreeBSD release engineering build uh, environment. So um, if we go over here, um, we have no uh, no SSH keys or anything um, in this directory. You'll notice, um, and we can run the standard um, standard Terraform uh, command pipeline here. Um, which will just uh, basically set things up, uh, figure out what changes it needs to make in the, in the environment and then execute them. And so what's gonna happen is it will actually create um, a set of ephemeral SSH keys here and install them into the, into the instances that, um, that it will uh, instantiate and have running. Uh, so let's just take a, a moment. It's about a minute or so to provision the, the new instances. Um, I just wanted to also mention uh, a lot of the work that went into this. Uh, David, uh, Dave Cottlehuber also put a lot of effort into getting um, getting things up and running in the, the Oracle environment. Um, and it's uh, um, the image is, uh, is stable and, and working well now. So we'll have links to the original um, uh, the original Terraform repo and the fork that I created um, uh, coming up in just a moment. So you can repeat this fairly easily. So there we go. One of them is, is provisioned in 47 seconds later. And the other one is, is now as well. Um, and uh, the Terraform configuration has created um, a public key, uh, a, a SSH key pair. Um, it's shown the, the public key here and it's installed it into the, um, the instance. And now if I uh, switch back here, and share Share this. We can see that I've got two um, two instances running in the the console now, um, with the uh, the addresses shown. And we'll switch back to the. Terraform window over here. Um, now it might it might take just a moment. Um, the the minute or so is for or, um, Oracle Cloud to provision the instance, but it's still running the cloud in it, uh, and um, uh, installing packages and installing SSH keys and such. I'll just give it a moment to come up. Um,
There was a question um, in the chat um, about what is the OCI home region um, and whether I'm in Toronto. Um, I'm certainly near Toronto and I've chosen the, um, the Toronto region for my, uh, my experimentation. Um, they've got data centers in, in quite a few, um, few locations in the, the sort of usual expected places. Yeah, I will, uh, one thing to note, uh, I do know that the, um, they've been very successful with their launch of the Ampere A1 instances. And as such, depending upon the region you're in, there may not be actual, uh, you may, there may not be enough capacity. So uh, it's definitely a good idea to, uh, to, to try to um, maybe check where available uh, extra capacity for the A1 instances are. And uh, if you're signing up, pick a region um, pick a region that will have uh, have that capacity. And if if people who uh, I guess are are have questions about that, you know, feel free to email me, and I can try to help you out to figure out what what the best location um, would be at this time, given the nature of uh, of the usage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So here's one of the instances that's um, been provisioned. Um, so I mean, you can see it's a current snapshot that I built um, recently, but uh, we're going to work with the release engineering team um, and get the the all of the build steps integrated um, into the regular snapshot and release build process. Um, so there's a few packages that come pre-installed, basically as a result um, of having Cloud in it. Uh, included in the image, which is what takes care of uh, setting up the SSH keys and uh, running anything that needs to be um, installed as part of the, the provisioning. Uh, so basically that's, I guess, the, um, uh, the quick demo of getting um, some free instances running, free, free BSD instances running in the uh, Oracle Cloud free tier. Um, so with that, I will stop this share and let Peter uh, take it, the screen over again. Ready, let me see. Where we go? All right. Let me get back to where we were. <coughs> All right. So you know what are, what are the next steps uh, as we were talking about uh, for FreeBSD and uh, these images? You know, my my goal when reaching out to Ed was to have uh, you know FreeBSD be a first class citizen for uh, A1 instances found in OCI. So our goal is to you know uh, work with the FreeBSD Foundation to help them get official uh, released images curated uh, for the Ampere A1s into the um, Oracle Cloud uh, marketplace. And uh, as Ed said, we want to thank thank Dave for all his uh, efforts, uh, you know, working on the the images that we were able to consume in this demo. Uh, additionally, uh, you know, one of the the areas uh, that uh, Oracle has actually invested a lot of time and energy in is their integration with uh, Terraform, and as such. Uh, they provide a, uh, a really nice way to make it easy for people to launch their workloads in to the OCI uh, interface relatively easily. And uh, ideally, what we'd like to do is, uh, you know, clean up the demo that uh, Ed uh, and I have been working on, make it a little more uh, polished, and then uh, also have it where uh, anybody could one click uh, a button out of the repository to have an instance launched uh, directly on uh, on the OCI cloud. So that that's some of the areas that we're looking to uh, continue uh, to advance. Uh, you know, with what we started to help to make uh, you know previous DB first class citizen for the MPRA one in the Oracle cloud infrastructure. And then here are some, you know, some resources uh, that that we uh, that are available. So the initial uh, project that Ed forked, uh, the first URL um, is there underneath the Ampere Computing or Organization on GitHub. Uh, Ed's fork can be uh, uh, 
found below. And then additionally, uh, some of the other uh, Terraform resources available for uh, you know, consumption uh, with OCI can be found, uh, found in, the, in the additional links provided. And then, you know, at that, I'll open the floor up to uh, questions, comments, or topics of discussion that uh, people may want to bring up. So one question that someone asked on IRC, um, <coughs> does Ampere have, and I don't know if I'll pronounce this correctly because it's like a, a model name, Tiagra or Tiogra pass like um, open compute motherboards, the, the systems that use those type of system, those motherboards available. And I think this person is interested um, not in running a cloud instance, but perhaps building their own cloud in a data center. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're interested in building your own cloud in a data center, feel free to definitely reach out to me and I can put you in contact um, with, uh, with somewhere to actually get the platforms from. Uh, essentially, you know, we, we offer, uh, Ampere works with multiple ODMs to provide uh, different, different server platforms. Um, the Mav Jade is the OCP specific platform. So that's the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, uh, our, our reference platform for the Ampere Ultra that recently was accepted uh, as, a, uh, as an OCP, uh, OCP platform and we contribute it upstream. Um, so for, yeah, feel, feel free to reach out to me. I can definitely, uh, you know, put you in, in contact or help you uh, determine, you know, which Ampere platform is, is best, whether it's a 1P or 2P. Uh, and we have, as I said, we work with multiple ODMs. So you can, uh, you can get those uh, through the ODM should you want to build your own in-house. In Hopefully that answers your question. Probably so. It was, I was for indirect for someone else, but I think that probably answers what they wanted. A second question we had on Zoom from Mark um, is, do you have any insights into what users are running on top of Ampere FreeBSD systems? Well, I'll, I'll leave that to Ed because a lot of this stuff we're just enabling as we, uh, it's in early enablement phase. Uh, and I'll, I guess, open the floor up to Ed to add some comments to that. But. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, we we don't have a lot of insight into what's being run today. A lot of this is, is sort of forward looking and, and enablement. Um, I mean, there's there's definitely interest in um, ARM64 in all of FreeBSD's um, uh, FreeBSD's kind of typical traditional server um, applications. So, uh, you know, content streaming is certainly a um, an interesting application for uh, for this kind of hardware. Um, we have uh, a number of machines in the FreeBSD cluster, um, uh, older generation Ampere uh, uh, EMAG systems that are, are used for our own um, uh, FreeBSD build infrastructure and such. Uh, but in the, in the case of it, you know, deploying FreeBSD ARM64 um, in the Oracle Cloud, uh, for example, um, it's, it's definitely an um, uh, enablement and forward-looking uh, uh, case. So I see we also have a question from Warner, which is actually a question I had too, um, although mine was perhaps less well framed, which is, is it possible, how easy is it to spin these up on demand? And could we use these uh, to kind of do CI on ARM64 for FreeBSD? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the whole point of this uh, kind of Terraform demo was to show that they can be spun up on demand in a, in a very typical um, use case uh, for, you know, people consuming cloud uh, infrastructure resources, right? So, um, so one, that, that's what we were hoping to show with this, that you, they can be both spun up and tore down uh, very rapidly on demand. And uh, the idea being, you know, uh, also showing the uh, that the the fact that you know there's that integration with cloud and it, you know cloud and it definitely uh, opens the door to the first uh, kind of uh, wave of uh, being able to perform automation uh, during the instant startup. So most definitely, uh, this is a great use case for uh, continuous integration uh, and uh, you know th those types of activities uh, on FreeBSD. So uh, you know the goal is to help to encourage. 
this as a resource for uh, you know FreeBSD, FreeBSD developers to consume uh, it for those types of activities. So um, yeah, feel free to do exactly that and to use it to build and uh, package uh, our native you know technologies for FreeBSD. Okay, so I think that's all the questions we have for now. Thank you very much, Peter and Ed, uh, for your talk. And I think we'll go ahead and move into our next break for about 10 minutes before we come back for our next talk. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the time.